For as long as humans have lived near rivers, we've tried to shape them, to harness their energy, feed off their waters, and survive their floods. Just recently, Ethiopia inaugurated the GERD, or the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, a colossal structure on the Abe River, one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects Africa has ever seen. And it got me thinking, how do you stop a river? What does it take to tame nature's most powerful force? Dams are the invisible engines of modern day life. They light up cities, feed crops, store waters, and even protect us from floods. But every dam begins with a crucial question, where? Choosing a dam site can take years. Engineers look for narrow valleys with strong walls, with decent seasonal river flows, and also bedrock geology that is capable of holding vast amounts of water. Because there's no point having a reservoir which leaks lots of water into the ground. Once the site is picked, the next stage begins. You can't build a dam in the middle of a river, so you have to move it. Engineers dig bypass channels, sometimes bigger than highways, to redirect the river. They then build coffer dams to isolate the work area to allow them to start building. It's high stakes plumbing on a massive scale. Without the river in their way, construction begins. Dams are usually built in layers, rock, clay, concrete. They're designed to hold back billions of cubic meters of water. Depending on a river's characteristics, different dams are used. Gravity dams, for instance, rely on their immense weight to hold back the water. Arch dams are curved upstream, allowing the water's force to be pushed into the walls of the canyons. And then we have embankment dams. These are made from rock and earth, often favored for their flexibility, as well as the ability to absorb the pressure across a broader area. Dams can be used for plenty of things, including creating electricity through hydroelectric power. In fact, over 14% of our global energy is produced by these hydroelectric power stations. But there's always a trade-off. Ecosystems shift in unpredictable ways. Wetlands might dry out, fish migration routes might get blocked, and sediment supply once coming from upstream may get halted in its tracks. All of these can contribute to entire ecosystems and food chains collapsing. Wildlife either adapts to this new rhythm of flow or vanishes completely. Meanwhile, human communities face relocation sometimes losing entire ancestral lands, or even access to essential water sources. Entire landscapes are rewritten, not just physically, but culturally, ecologically. We stop the river, but it starts a new chapter. In the end, every dam is a balance between our need to control and the river's quiet insistence to keep flowing.